Hello everyone and welcome back to First Chapter Friday. I have another spooky story this week. I have for you The Incredibly Dead Pets of Rex Dexter and is written by Aaron Reynolds. And you're like, wait a minute. Mrs. Tran has read several Aaron Reynolds stories to me before. Like creepy carrots, creepy pair of underwear, creepy crayon. And if you liked any of those picture books, I think you might even really like this particular chapter book. So our main character is obviously named Rex Dexter, and that is his best friend over there. And the thing with Rex Dexter is he can talk to dead animals. Yep, he can talk to dead animals. He can communicate with dead animals. And he learns the best way for him to be able to control this particular skill. So let's go ahead and dive into chapter one. Prologue. Allow me to be completely transparent. You probably won't believe any of this. Even my best friend Darvish didn't believe me at first. And that guy would believe just about anything. When we first met in third grade, I told him I was really a spy for the country of Poopsylvania. He believed it for three solid weeks. You heard right. He believed in a country called Poopsylvania for almost a month. But even Darvish had a hard time choking down recent events in my life, which is why I haven't told a single living person what's been happening to me, except Darvish, and now you. Deep breath. Here it goes. I can talk to dead animals. There, I said it. Are you happy now? I'm talking about animals that are deceased, the wreath of life, no longer with us. Only apparently, they are still with us, and let me tell you, they're a chatty group. I don't know how they find me. I'm not sure who's handing out my address in the animal underworld, but somehow they do. They find me. They talk to me. They pester me to do stuff for them. I've become an afterlife errand boy. A word of advice. If you ever find yourself in a contest with a Grim Reaper or a mechanical facsimile of the Grim Reaper, make sure you win. Perhaps I've said too much. Maybe I should back up and start at the very beginning. Good idea. Forget you read this. Chapter 1. My story starts with a dream. We all have dreams, right? A fire in the belly that drives our spirit towards accomplishment. George Washington dreamed of being the first president with wooden teeth. Albert Einstein dreamed of having fluffier hair than any other scientist in history. Pepto-Bismol dreamed of a world without diarrhea. The first thing you should know about me is this. More than anything else in the world, I've always dreamed of owning a dog. A real-life pet of my own. I know what you're thinking. Why a dog? How about a cat? Or a gerbil? In my mind, a dog is the only true pet. A cat? No. A ferret? Cool, but no. A gerbil? Please. Of all the household animals, a dog is the pinnacle. No other animal can compare. And the best of the best? My greatest wish? My most favorite dream? A chocolate Labrador. That's a proper pet. Don't get me wrong, I'm open to other possibilities. A yellow Labrador would be fine. A black Labrador, also fine. Even a golden retriever would be okay. Not perfect, but certainly acceptable. As you can see, I am not picky. I was practically born to have a dog. After all, my name is Rex. Rex Dexter. It's a dog's name for crying out loud. It's one step away from being named Fido or Bandit or Spot. With a name like that, I should obviously own a dog. But I don't. See this empty backyard? It is devoid of canine. See the front of the bed? It suffers from absence of pooch. See this kitchen floor? It is without dog dish. It is a sad state of affairs. My cruel situation is made even worse by the cold and ruthless reality. Everyone I know has a pet. Everyone. For example, there's Sammy Mulpepper. Sammy Mulpepper is the smartest kid in my class. She has wavy hair and smells of soup. She also has an English settler named Sassafarilla. You can tell she's smart by her choice of pet. This does not mean I like her. I do not. Edwin Willoughby sits three rows behind me at school. He has a pit bull named Alfred. I respect his life choices. Even Holly Kreskin has two cats named Tiger and Sardine. Cats don't really count, but it still supports my point. Two cats. And I don't think she even likes animals. She wrinkles her nose every time I bring them up. My own best friend has four dogs, if you can believe it. Four. 
It is greedy in the extreme. Here is a list of the pet living at Darvish's house. 1. A pug named Rascal. 2. A Dalmatian named Tinka. 3. A Schnauzer named Hong Kong Fooey. 4. A Boxer named Sir barks a lot. 5. A Fat Raccoon nameless and resides in Darvish's yard because his mom leaves dog food on the back porch. Darvish insists that the raccoon does not count. But even without the raccoon, I can think we can all agree. Darvish is a pet hoarder. One time, Darvish let me pretend that Rascal was mine and take him for a walk. He's a thoughtful friend. Despite his pet hogging tendencies, five minutes into our walk, Rascal threw up on my shoe. So I could tell his heart wasn't in it. Now, if you liked chapter one, I think you will probably like the rest of the chapters in this book. And I'm pretty sure you're going to love this book. And if you do, then there's also book two, Narwhal, I'm Around. And then the third one is Everybody Loves Magic. I want to say that he's going to have more books within this series, but we're just going to find out together. All right. Happy reading, everyone. See you next time on First Chapter Fridays.